Hey everyone, welcome back to the Clever TV Breaking Dawn Book Club. I'm Jocelyn Davis with Dana Ford. Hello. And we are so excited to have two experts joining us in the studio to talk about chapters 15 and 16. First up, it's our very own Bridget Daly from Clever Music. Hello. Thank you for coming back to the show. Thanks we for love having, having me. you. I missed you guys. Yes, we missed you too. We missed you. And also joining us is one of the top <laughs> experts out there. It's Angie Beach. You might know her from Team Twilight as well as Team Taylor Lautner. Oh, Welcome. yeah. Hey. <laughs> Thanks so for nice having me. Have you here. Thank you. It's great to be here. Um, so we're going to jump right in. We're still in Jacob's point of view. So this is chapter 15. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. End scene. Um, <laughs> I love the chapter names. We've discussed this time and time again. And um, in this chapter, there's going to be tons of wolf speak. Uh, how do we think that's going to be handled in the movie? I know we've already discussed it, but what's your expert opinion? Oh, my expert opinion. Um, I, I would personally like to see it as voiceover and have the wolves in their wolf form talk to each other and, and hear what they're saying. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. That's what I would like to see. Um, what's going to happen, I'm not sure. Um, I think it will be good no matter what. I think Bill Condon is a genius mm -hmm. in what he's done so far has just surpassed our expectations, but yeah, yeah, that's what I, I, I think that would be the, 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 most, best, the best way to do it, but you but know, we'll have to wait we'll have and to see. see. Right, but yeah. obviously you can't cut all of these huge wolf portions out of the plot because no, no. they're too important really. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. And um, so lots of wolf speak at the start of this chapter. We have Jake, Seth and Leah, the three person pack. And they're communicating about Bella, what's going on with her, broke another rib. At this point, it's kind of like, oh, broke another rib. No big deal. Oh, broke no pelvis. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Poor girl. I mean, it's crazy. If I broke one rib, I would be like out of commission as long as possible. Yes. <laughs> it's crazy. I still can't believe how quickly the pregnancy is moving. Right. It's so strange. I know. So interesting, though. If it's only real painful. life was like that, it would be insane. <laughs> yeah, painful. Um, and then, of course, they're also sort of relaying facts back and forth about, you know, Alice and Rosalie are asking about them. And um, so, anyways, that's kind of like the wolf speak portion mm -hmm. of the book, which I'm really looking forward to see play out. And another little fun tidbit that I really enjoy overall throughout the saga, and I want to get your guys' opinion, wolves are like human heaters. Mm. Like, I love that part of the wolves. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right? <laughs> and so important in this chapter especially, because yes. Bella is so cold. I know, it's like finally it comes into play yeah. as something that's beneficial. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and Jacob learns, speaking of how fast the pregnancy is moving, that Bella's due date is in four days. And what? Isn't that crazy? <laughs> I insane. mean, seriously. Uh, and he starts to cry when he learns, you know, that the bigger she gets or realizes like the tighter her pull becomes on him, which we can view as foreshadowing. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Now. How yes. horrible right. would that have been? What are you thinking that this scene's gonna be like in the film? Like, people are crying. Ah, <sighs> devastating. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it's just gonna be so hard. I mean, Taylor just see, or seeing him play Jacob being devastated is really, he's great at it. And mm -hmm. he's it's very touching and it's gonna be really, really hard to watch. Heartbreaking. Well, thank yeah. goodness it's only four days left until the baby is born, <laughs> because otherwise we'd see we him don't have so upset for left. a long time. Right? Yeah. yeah, it's not a nice He's already been pregnancy. through enough, the poor guy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, four days is enough. <laughs> um, and he's so annoyed by his emotions. We see a lot of this, like, back and forth, because, you know, when he comes into the room, like, she's excited to see him, and he's like, doesn't want her to be excited, but yeah. he does, but he doesn't. What's your take on this constant back and forth for him? Well, I think I think we know that it's he's not reacting to her necessarily, but he doesn't know that. Yeah. And so he's feeling things that he thinks he shouldn't be feeling and everybody else thinks he shouldn't be feeling, but mm -hmm. he is and it's like to extent an extent that's completely overwhelming to him. Mm -hmm. And he just doesn't understand it, which I can understand. That's a crazy thing. Yeah. I mean, who would have guessed? I know, right. exactly. <laughs> Never me, that's for sure. Yeah. yeah. And then Bella says, you know, she feels complete when he is around. Do you mm -hmm. think that's selfish of her? Like, <gasps> yes. <laughs> Whispering, yes. I mean, a little bit. Think about it. She's like, oh, I feel safe when I'm around all the, Cull the Cullens, and you're part of my family. So she's just grouping Jacob right in with the Cullens. They're completely different entities. I mean, this yeah. is completely different, and she knows that. Mm -hmm. She's just trying to be selfish. But the only thing that I can say is that she's pregnant. She's obviously going through a really rough pregnancy, so she kind of can be selfish right <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah, she gets a pass. That's true. Yeah. For sure. She does get a pass. 
And like you said, she considers him part of her family, kind of. Like, he's now been grouped into the family. She's about to become a vampire, though. Mm -hmm. so but, it's, like, super complicated. But maybe it also has to do with a little bit of foreshadowing as well. I because agree. with yeah. Renesme, uh, I mean, with the whole infringing thing, maybe that's why she feels like he's part of the family. Right. Because he literally is going to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and her I son -in -law. think, historically, Bella that's is weird. very selfish where Jacob's concerned anyway. Absolutely. Right. She True. just is, and she yeah. admits that. That she, you know, I'm sorry I feel this way, but I do. And she just... Something else that's super interesting that's brought up in this chapter is, you know, Bella falls asleep and then Jake and Edward start chatting about Charlie. What the heck's gonna happen to Charlie? Like, Charlie. Edward doesn't want to hurt Bella when she's really down with this pregnancy by saying this might not actually be possible. But I mean, is she delusional legitimately to think yeah. that she's gonna yes. have a relationship with her Completely. dad? Completely. Yeah. And I don't fault Edward for doing what he did, like kind of like leading her to believe that right. that can happen. Because he's like, she has so many more important, well, I mean, it is still important, but right. you put it in the, yeah. in the chain of important things right now in her life, and the baby and her survival is obviously first. Kind of at the top of your list. <laughs> kind You're of. dead, you can't hang out with your dad. No. Anyway, so, <laughs> sorry. So Edward tells Jacob that through Jasper's research about people that have been through similar experiences, um, that he's learned that no one has survived this sort of half vampire, half human birth situation. And Jacob gets really angry. I think that's a normal reaction. Though. Yeah, because nobody wants to be told that. When, like, say you're dying, <laughs> you have some terminal disease, and they're like, really quick, I just Wikipedia this. No one's ever survived. Sorry. Good this luck. Is such a depressing chapter. It yeah. is. I mean, it's like boo hoo hoo for everyone to some extent. It's and then you have Rosalie being really flip about it in the background, yeah. which, you know, just infuriates everybody. Just, like, makes you know? it worse, yeah. like, just churning the pot, yeah. kind of, and getting everybody even more emotional about it. So this brings us to Chapter 16, another great name, Too Much Information Alert. And we start back with the wolves, so more wolf speak here. Um, Leah thanks Jacob for letting her stay in the pack since he is the alpha, you know, he has the power here. Mm -hmm. But talk about a big change mm -hmm. for Leah. But were you surprised that Leah was like saying, you know, thanks for letting me stay? Because she didn't have to do that. I mean, she didn't have to actually thank him. I wasn't because I think she's, you know, she goes on to, well, uh, thanks for letting me stay, but I want to stay forever kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so she's wanting exactly. to get more yeah. out of it, you know, so she was kind of priming him for, you know. Yeah. And I mean, why do you think she wants to stay? We've already discussed this in previous episodes, but what do you think her real motive for being with Jake is? Is it to be with her brother and protect him or does it have more to do with Sam, you think? Well, I don't think she has any intention of Seth being there. Yeah. I, I think that her plan is to send him back and let him go to school and do that whole thing and have be a normal, a normal life yeah. Yeah. as you can when you're a wolf. But, right. um, <laughs> um, I, I just think it's the lesser of two evils. You know, she would rather be with Jacob and be largely ignored than to be with Sam and have to look at that every day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, poor girl, it's not like yeah. she has tons of options. It's A or B, mm -hmm. so she's going with B. Yeah, I yeah. think I would choose B as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, so after this, the wolf portion of the chapter kind of wraps up here. Um, Jake goes back to human form, and here's that, once again, Bella's been hurt by her adorable little bambino. Ouch. Broken pelvis this time. Ouch. Ow. Ouch. Call me crazy, this is a serious injury, right? Like, yeah. Don't like, think you can really walk after that one. <laughs> Another like more lighthearted slash fun slash interesting part towards again at the end of the chapter is Edward realizes he can hear the baby and he relays messages from what? Bella. <laughs> it's like the craziest thing ever to me. It's really cool. It, uh, it so almost reminded me of like in human form when like parents can feel the baby mm -hmm. kicking. And in this sense, like, obviously there's a lot more going on with this baby. <laughs> it's a little more violent. So this is like this sweet, you know, way of like communicating with the baby almost. It's crazy. I'm dying to see all this pan out. I um, want I want to see how they do this. Yeah. The I cannot wait. I, you know, I mean, it's not, to me, the thing I don't get is that it's, he hears voices. We know he hears conversations, Edward does. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now it's an unusual fetus, but is it having sentences? We didn't know that at that point, that it was Nothing having very thoughts. Quickly. Very quickly. <laughs> that apparently dad can hear. Yeah. So. Very genius baby inside of there. So that pretty much wraps things up. What would you say is your favorite part about these very dominant, you know, Team Jacob chapters? 
You know, my, my, and we didn't really touch on it, but my, um, of the first chapter, my favorite part I'm absolutely looking forward to is the, the dialogue between um, Rosalie and Jacob. Right, and, yeah. And my favorite part is when she goes in and she molds that bowl to make it into to a, make dog it like a dog. Yeah. Bowl. And then when he, when he, hits her in the head with that and she freaks out because he got food in her hair. I'm just, I'm so <laughs> looking forward. And Nikki Reed has said that, you know, that that's some of her favorite things about the book also. Her and Taylor mm -hmm. have talked about it and that it's in the script. So I'm really excited to see some of that back and forth. Oh, what about you, Bridge? What was your favorite part? Well, another thing we didn't really talk about too much was um, one of the questions that came up in the chapters was why hasn't having the Collins taken Bella into like a safe haven and mm -hmm. taking her away from the right. house. Mm -hmm. And the main reason it comes back to Carlisle because he has all those connections in Forks and he has all the equipment and you know, you know, whatever she needs, Access. they can get that for her and this really is the safest place for her. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, it's not in some hospital in the middle of nowhere. Right. It's in Alaska at the Collins house. Yeah. And they're dealing with something so new and never experienced before that right. they probably should have everything on hand. Exactly. Just, Just in case. case. Mm -hmm. Dana Ward. Um, I'd say my favorite part of this chapter just has to deal with the speed of Bella's transformation regarding the pregnancy, obviously not her <laughs> transformation into vampire form, but, um, and bringing it back to, I'm just curious to see how that happens and how that plays out on the big screen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And of course, since this is interactive, we love having fan involvement. I actually asked a question yesterday on Clever TV's Facebook and Twitter account and I said, is Bella crazy to think that she is going to survive the birth of her baby? And we got some really great responses from you guys. Ooh. Maya Labou said, when you're a mother, you do and think crazy things. <laughs> it's so true. That's and good. she is a mother, and we saw that that transition, you know, on the honeymoon. She's like, no, I'm keeping mm -hmm. this baby. Mm -hmm. um, and then Cynthia Sloan Moreno said, I've read the books many times. She dies and is reborn again, a vampire. So she's the living dead now. A little pun there. Never thought of it like that. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. interesting. I'm sure there's like mixed opinions on the living dead thing. I mean, mm -hmm. she does become a vampire, but dying and then becoming a vampire. Right. Be before I get too off topic. Um, Yanira Savalo says about Bella, of course she's crazy. Who else would have dated a vampire? <laughs> <laughs> well, there is that. <laughs> Bringing it all the way back to the brass tack. <laughs> Bringing it full circle, yeah. people. Um, and I actually want to leave you guys with a question, totally hypothetical, of course, and I want to get your feedback in the comment section here. My question is, what would have happened to Jacob and Edward if Bella had died? Obviously, that didn't happen in the book. Mm. But what would this have meant for them? If you could paint the picture, leave a comment and let us know because I'm really, really curious to, to think about that and kind of talk about it as a topic. So let us know. Um, you guys, thanks as always for hanging out. The book fun club. Times. Yeah, this is fun. This mm. is a good one. Good chapters. Angie, how can our fans keep in touch with you? Because you are like always on the ball with all things Twilight. Yes, um, they can follow us at um, www.team-twilight.com or for all the Taylor news, um, uh, teamtaylorblautner.com. Love it. Wow. Awesome. And we'll have those links for you guys here Bookmark. in our info section. Yeah. Bookmark. Yeah, exactly. So make sure to <laughs> check them out. There's tons of information, all the latest on Twilight and Taylor Lautner. And of course, stick with Clever TV because we are going to be breaking down Breaking Dawn leading up to the big premiere of the first movie, which is right around the corner, November 18th. Yay. Can't Soon. wait. I'm Jocelyn Davis <laughs> with Dana Ward, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Thanks.